Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Parak and in today's video I'm going to share what I've been working on. I want to call it the ultimate strength hammer build. Essentially I've pushed the limit of my talisman and my augments that I can possibly get without cheating to try and create the best possible strength hammer build and I think I've made it. I just need a couple more augments that I've run out of augmenting materials for. So that's what we're going to be doing today, is just random anomalies. But as you can see, it's built around an attack boost 2, weakness exploit 2, with a 2 slot. This is the best talisman that I've gotten in all my time playing Sunbreak. But the idea is I want to make the best possible build for all the weapons I play. So, hammer, hunting horn, insect glaive, maybe sword and shield as well, because I think they can get some pretty stupid damage output, thanks to offensive guard and embolden being a thing. As you can see, here's all the skills I've got for it at the moment. The green ones are from decorations. But as I said, this set is missing two augments specifically. I need two levels of bloodlust. And that would put this weapon at 100% affinity. Now I did do some calculations to see whether affinity is more worthwhile than the attack. It's not. You lose about 4 raw. It's not worth it at all. I also only have to deal with one health drain now, which is fine. I'm fine with that. So let's get on to some hunts, shall we? Right, we got Mickey and a 127 Tiostra. Let's get over there. Hopefully it's not almost dead. That would be ideal. And I don't like scabbing off people as soon as I join hunts. It's kind of annoying, but it tends to be an issue at the moment. Oh, really? Interesting. I guess I hadn't gotten into combat with him yet, because we do have Defiance on here, but uh, it didn't activate there. Because we uh, weren't in combat yet. 590. These hits may seem pretty small, but as soon as we get the 100% the affinity working from the augments we don't have yet, uh, it'll be pretty, pretty solid, that's for sure. Oh nice, he dusted us. Oh boy, here we go, he's rising up. At least we get to hit him here as a punish. Nice, we got the hit. Definitely worth it. I gotta keep in mind, since it's T.O., we obviously don't get Anomaly Blight, which is gonna be a little bit annoying. But that's okay, we'll make do. No. Okay. No. Okay, okay. We're good, he should bite, we get a punish. Nice. We should be getting relatively close to a stun as well. Because we're using Dereliction, we get extra um, stagger power even if we don't have Slugger, which is great, like that. And we got Focus level 3, so we're just going for two charge Brutal Big Bangs. I think I missed the face. Oh, no. Nah. Uh, building up our Intrepid, which is very easy. And there we go. Got our Powder Mantle as well. Powder Mantle is insanely good on Hammer. I definitely recommend it uh, on every Hammer build you can make. Eating some fish to get this red health back. He doesn't have his breath yet, so we are fine there. Ah, oh, come on! I thought I was far enough away. We're in danger now. Oh, never mind. Okay. And your pretty eyes don't deceive you. The Tigrex hammer is the best raw hammer now. Um, Gosserag fell behind because uh, you lose a chunk of raw damage on elemental weapons now. And element does literally nothing for strength, so we don't care too too much about the element that it gained. Like, we literally gain very, very, very little damage from any kind of element boosts. So, all of the raw hammers kind of jumped ahead of the, uh, Gosserag one. Placing down some mines there, Mickey. Nice, mate. I'm popping for ya. Two, three. What are you doing? He's roaring. I swear... Does Defiance 3 not work against Teo? I swear it did work against Elders, but I guess not. We got a Gold Wrath mount. I would definitely be taking that. Glorious Golden Babe herself. The Diva, some might say. Alright, let's get... No spin for her? Okay. There we go. Got something. Did very little. Get the spin. Yeah, that's better, baby. Put her back on the floor. Just so we can do that de again, because it did way more than her uh, aerial stuff. Kind of like an insect glaive in that sense. Just be on the ground, you'll do more damage. Trust. At least sometimes you will. Um, let's get one more. There we go, get the finisher off. Probably get over to the face. Oh, um, the other reason this hammer got pushed ahead of everything else in terms of pure raw damage. Um, the extra 10 levels of sharpness actually does Tigrex hammer some great justice because uh, previously the sharpness on Tigrex was what was holding it back in the first place and having those extra 10 levels is really really good for it 
as well as with um, obviously the huge boost of raw that it got from TU4. Which honestly should have been a bit higher, um, but I guess that would break a lot of the weapons. Especially a lot of the, the status build up boost ones. Due to how much damage they already do. But uh, you'll find this is a lot more consistent than a build up boost set. Or a Frostcraft set for that matter. Because Frostcraft, as I've mentioned before, is only really good if you get hit a lot. Which you kind of don't want to do on anomalies. Because as you can see, I've been hit twice and I've been put at death's door twice. So uh, yeah, it's not exactly what you need starting on top of me. Can I hit him? Yeah! Okay, just water strike that. Keep moving. You'll do this twice. Get back the other way. Okay. Two, three. Very nice. As I said, the damage isn't too spectacular yet. It really does need its uh, Bloodlust level 2. Just to give it that final bit of affinity that it needs. And it will do much, much more every time. Because I think it should be doing like 8 to 1000 every single hit. Which is obviously better than the 400 that we keep seeing. But that is literally just because it's not critting. Oh, frontal? No? Okay, we take that. That's a punish. Very nice. And he's blue now. Excellent. Let's probably get a step smash into a uh, impact burst just to build up our powder mantle. And pop those uh, bombs for him. Even though it's not the uh, biggest damage boost for him. Because the landmines damage is based on how hard it gets hit. And obviously, doing a small uh, impact burst isn't the best way to pop them. That's why they did like 180 for him previously. Oh boy, I just realized he's been in this hunt a while, poor guy. That's the uh, struggle of fighting like the elders with ranged weapons. If you're not aiming at the good hit zones the entire time, your ammo is just going to do nothing. And I think that's what's been happening because he's been shooting through T.O. plenty. But, uh, it wouldn't exactly be doing any damage because he's had his aura the whole time. Where is he going? Yeah, see, he'll be dealing zero damage here again. Except on the tail and the face. Okay. Unfortunate stagger. He's, uh, dragging him away from us. I should have been charging the whole time, but that's alright. Oh. Yeah, I should have just blinded it in the previous zone. Oh, well. GG's, Mikey. Mickey. Well everybody that was working on and building up our perfect hammer build before the title update 5 where this will maybe become irrelevant, I don't know. Depends how good the armor set we get from TU5 will be. As well as the decorations, if we get things like Bloodlust it's going to change quite a bit. But hopefully next time you see this set I should have two Bloodlust on it assuming that I actually keep playing because uh... The burnout has been kind of real, but that's fine. That's the nature of Endgame Monster Hunter. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you on the next one.